Hello and welcome to another episode of Convos and Chill. Man, we're on episode 27 and this is just getting more exciting for me. Tonight, I'm ha- I, like I met this person on Instagram just by luck. And I was just, you know, uh, I think she followed me and I followed her back or it was, I don't know, vice versa. I followed her. She followed me back. I don't know how was it. So it was crazy. Like the stuff she does is like she's a she's an artist herself, but she dedicated her time now to help growing artists with the right tools, how to market themselves and, you know, how to go about this whole uh, music or what they want to do with it. So it's crazy. And uh, her name is Latoya Cooper, and I'm so happy that I met her because it's, I mean, I've been talking to her off air. It's just crazy how much stuff that we could talk about. So I, I want to, like, you know, use as much as time we can in the, in the session itself. So thank you very much, whoever is tuning. By the way, my name is Ahmed, and this show called Convos and Chill, and this show is regarding me and my guests clicking on topics that we share the same interest, and we talk about it over a cup of tea. So before moving... To my guest, I need to make a few shout-outs. Gamers Lounge Dubai Facebook page is doing their second giveaway. So go down to their page. It's crazy stuff. They're giving away crazy stuff. Now they're giving away a Watchdog PS4 controller. So go over there, check the drill, tag someone, like their Facebook pages and their IG pages, and test your luck and... I hope you get that controller. I hope I get the controller. So go to their page. Shout out from my side. Tell them you came from Convos and Chill. And all the uh, uh, and best of luck to you. And if you want to get yourself an illustration like the one you see in the beginning of the show, please contact Bundlehead on Instagram. I'm going to be putting his link after the show is off air in the caption. So you guys go and check his stuff. He's a crazy dude. He likes to draw. So doodle and stuff. All these things. Get in, t- like, uh, get in touch with him, tell him what you want, and he is a cool dude, and he's so chill. So, let's watch a video, and then we're going to move on to Latoya Cooper. Latoya, welcome to the Convos and Chill episode 27. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode. How are you, Latoya? I am great. Thank you for having me. I'm just intrigued by uh, the time difference here. <laughs> it's about um, 11.30-ish here, yep. and it's what time there? Uh, here is 8.30 p.m. PM. Oh my goodness. It's amazing. I'm excited that we're able to connect just like completely on the opposite sides of the world. Yeah, that, that's that's the beauty of it. I mean, you're like, it's, I mean, why I'm saying this because I'm so excited for this episode that we're going to talk about a lot of things. You like, I, I don't even know you personally, but because we're like, you know, music lovers and we're artists and, you know, creative con, you know, we are into this whole creative con, the uh, content d- department, we can connect easy like it's so easy for us to connect so we have so many things to talk about and i'm so happy that i got you on the episode and i'm looking forward to whatever you're gonna be uh, shedding light on because as i told you off air it's like uh we need to learn a lot of things from that side and you are uh you are being a u.s citizen and being in this industry for a while and now you're helping uh upcoming artists how to use their stuff and uh like uh, very strategically to get whatever they want it's just a crazy uh topic to talk about and learn from you you know it's it's a perfect topic to talk about and to learn from because um you know i'm really focused on empowering artists and finding the power in their gift you know Mm -hmm. and what i find so amazing about creatives is that we are, we may have a a gift. For example, you have this wonderful, successful podcast. You're not just a podcaster. (laughs) I mean, you you have such rich skills in technology and, and just by 
being in this creative space is forced you to learn so many other valuable skills that can be used in all kinds of settings. You just mm -hmm. never know, you know? So I think that's really important just really to find our power and our gifts. For, uh, again, Latoya, thank you very much for joining me for this session. I'm really looking forward to what we're going to talk about. You know what? Why don't take a moment? I, I did a tiny introduction for you. So why, why don't you introduce yourself for the audience just to give like a backbone about yourself? Just a little bit about myself. Well, I am from Oklahoma out of all places, the middle of nowhere, right? <laughs> and um, I'm currently living in Texas. And um, I started out as a singer, a born, I mean, came out the wound singing. And I didn't really know, I just love singing. I didn't really have a reason, a purpose. I just kind of just love singing. And that's why you got the I nickname, the songstress, yeah? Yes. Uh, yeah. The songstress, you know, rock star, what, you know, whatever that's going to be. But um, as I got older, I realized that um, my purpose and my mission was really helping other people be successful. So that was one thing that over my adult life, I've really been great at. I've helped a lot of people start businesses, not just in music, but in other industries and really grow those businesses. Mm -hmm. And something told me, hey, you know, why not marry music and business together and really help more artists thrive in that business space and that's something i'm so dedicated to and uh i'm excited about the future of music means the boardroom well that's crazy because uh we as musicians i don't know i i mean i'm, I'm talking about myself I'm not in that headspace to help people out because I'm struggling to help myself out, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, kudos to you that you're actually taking ta like time off your schedule because you could have spent the same time to work on your own career, which you're basically doing, but helping out, which is much more, uh, how to say it, it's, it's much more giving to the, to the industry. So, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy that there's, that there is people like you that, you know, they still want to help, but... Man, I, I wish I could name drop a lot of things, but, you know, I just want to stay on the safe side. It's just crazy that, you know, it's completely different, different, like it's, it's, it's a two different industries, your side of the, of the debate and us over here. It's just the way we, de I mean, I, I, as I told you off air, like I was telling my friends, it's like, man, I just had a tiny conversation with Latoya and she explained something like some stuff very briefly and I'm following up with you all, uh, with all of your posts on, on, on IG and the way you're approaching things as in, you know, learning from famous artists is just, you know, those tiny steps are the things, right. you know, it, like, pulling out, pulling out some valuable, um, some of their valuable contributes that we don't even really think about, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, let's say, be, uh, Jennifer Lopez, most people know who she is. Mm -hmm. One thing about her is she is very regardless if she's great at something or not she's gonna like stand in it she's mm -hmm. not gonna be she's not gonna apologize for the opportunities that she's received she's not gonna apologize for her success mm -hmm. and we all should be like that you know if you're given an opportunity if a door opens up for you walk through that door and walk into that room like you belong in that room you know and that's how we grow and that's how we elevate and that's how um the next level experiences happen because we're able to really absorb and accept success in our lives. And um, oftentimes it's not just even an artist thing. It's just a people thing. Sometimes success is more scarier than failure at times, you know? So, exactly. I mean, that's just one example of something we can learn from people there. There's um, lots of other people. Um, the, the gentleman who owns Amazon, you know, um, I don't know if you've had a chance to go back and, and, like learn more about his story and his humble beginnings but he had like a job he quit his job mm -hmm. he started amazon selling used books yes, it was, in yeah. this little office with like this little paper sign and the wall that was drawn in color that said amazon like if you were to walk in there you would probably laugh and say what is this crazy man doing you know mm -hmm. but he was committed to his vision and we had talked about this earlier about how like as people who are born with vision, we can see what's possible. We can see, he could see what Amazon's full potential could be, but there are people who cannot see 
unless it's, unless it's directly in front of them. And he just didn't give up, and nor should we. Well, I mean, uh, Amazon is a very <laughs> you like you know it's like you can't even reach there. It's it, but uh, I like I get it. It's it's that level of dedication that you put in one thing, and you just work non-stoply just to reach to your goal which is crazy i mean uh, it just depends on how much you're dedicated to reach there but uh, again i uh, i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i think there is other other factors that plays a big role in this whole industry as in like you know what you know what let's not jump into the whole main topic from the get-go so you know what i tell me tell me about your early days as like in the whole music industry like wh how was your career how was it for you to start like uh you know singing in your in your early days and if you can give us that side of the united states how is this vibe over there because the way we see it is just very like you know uh, self-centered around metal bands and like you know band uh, like you know uh, music by bands so you tell us your story how was it for you in the early days well um i'm, I'm still a work in progress of course mm -hmm. as an artist i think artistry is something man i don't know if you can ever master it i think there are a few artists that we we view as completely mastered their gift but overall we're still a work in progress every day um, there's genres here, just like any other place. Um, we were talking earlier, earlier about how it would be nice to kind of like take those kind of labels off of music and just have music mm -hmm. just expand and just be free to experience outside of their own boxes within the creative space. I've, I found that very fascinating. The more that I've gotten involved into music, I'm learning that there are rules in music and we should break those too mm -hmm. so <laughs> um i'm learning that too so uh yeah yeah it's which, very interesting which, I, I think yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah go ahead go oh, ahead. i think that the the people who are running music aren't creatives so you know they tend to come in and like create a lot of uh boxes and structure you need a little bit of structure but um i think it kind of boxes the creative in at times so how was how was it for you when was the first time that you uh noticed that you have a gift of singing i like i said earlier i i came out the wound singing but i just didn't really know what to do with it was it a family um, thing was, like you uh, like you have no i'm the only creative in my family it was very it was a very it was i was kind of i'm kind of like the black sheep but not like in a bad way but i i'm very different than all of my family members like n i don't no one in my family sings or performs mm -hmm. or plays an instrument i'm a lone wolf <laughs> and it it was kind of rough but i realized that it was actually a gift because um as you know as as building a podcast building a business you really it's a lonely road. Mm -hmm. It really is because you've got to do all the work and you have to build thick skin in order to succeed. And had I not had that experience of growing up and kind of like having to figure things out as a creative on my own, I wouldn't have had the, the strength to be able to do what I do now. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you remember your first gig ever? Well, <laughs> Yes. Well, I started singing very young. Like I started in pageants, but professionally, mm -hmm. I didn't start um, as a professional singer until about 2013. Oh, okay. So it's more recent um, dur during my adult years. And it's it's been a kind of an interesting journey because for a long time, I didn't sing at all. So I didn't sing at all because I was, you know, following the direction that people tell you in life, you know, go get a nine to five and put mm. that music to the side. You don't need creativity. It's not important. It's not going to help you. And what I found was music and creativity is so valuable to my happiness. And I knew that I needed to be happy so that I could be happy around other people and be positive energy around other people and help other people thrive as well. So, um, I refound music and realized that it was something professionally I definitely wanted to have in my life. Mm -hmm. And I started writing again. I started I started learning 
how to play the guitar and I haven't picked that up in a while. So I'm kind of rusty on that one. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, so it has been probably about 2013 when I actually started getting in, in front of a stage and getting paid for it. Oh, nice. So you were living the American dream since day one. <laughs> it's the American dream. It's the American hustle. Let me tell you, <laughs> yes. it's not easy. It's not easy. It is. It's a lot of hard work. It is hard work and you have to love it. You really, really do. When they say in order to be an artist, in order to be a successful artist, you have to eat, sleep and breathe what you do. Mm -hmm. I don't think being a creative entrepreneur is any different than being any other type of entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It really isn't. The only difference is you're the product and you're the service. And which is kind of cool because you're like born with the product. You're born like you have that within you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go buy it. It's in you. It lives inside of you. That's a that's really cool. And um, so you have to hustle and do the work like any other entrepreneur, whether you own a grocery store, whether you own a school, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's the same process. Well, if we can just like shed more lights on uh, how this whole thing, it's like, uh, like the whole process uh, that happens in the industry over there in, in the States, like uh, what is the main factors that they look at as a, like on, on uh, and uh, sorry, what, what's the main factors that they look in an artist? Is it like you really your material needs to be that top notch material that, oh my God, we're going to sell a million copies of this just by the get go or it's your looks or is your, uh, what like, you know, just if you can like give us a bit of uh, insights on this thing. Because why I'm asking this, all of this the above, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> all of the above play a huge part. Um, being a woman mm -hmm. and I'm a, a fairly conservative woman style woman. But what I learned is like your looks and like sex appeal and all that stuff. It plays a huge part. It plays a huge part. Mm -hmm. And that's something that women have to kind of like decide what, lane of the road they're gonna they're gonna drive down you know mm -hmm. you know are you going it, it, how you know how do you, how many albums do you want to sell and all that kind of stuff so or how many followers do you want to have it plays a big part um your music the quality of your music plays a big part as well um you want to make great music things have changed with the internet and it's kind of like a catch-22 because now Everyone's music can get out there. Mm -hmm. It's an even playing field when it comes to your ability to sell records and make money and things like that. You don't have to have a label to actually be an assist a successful artist. You don't need it. Um, at the same time, you've got more people. You've got more people who are um, out there. So the industry is more saturated. Well, the thing is like uh, how to say it. It's just like it's crazy when it comes to these things as in uh, you need to have like as you said you need to have the full package basically but you got to have the full package you're absolutely but, right but um, I mean correct me if I'm wrong is that depending on the on the artist or that like uh, is it like okay let me let me put it this way by the way sorry if I'm stammering <laughs> stammering <laughs> the thing is like I'm trying to find the uh, the, the right word like it uh, does it differ from a band to an artist, like to a solo artist? Is, uh, or it's the same, like you need the same package for a band as well to make it in the business? It's probably the same, you know, but things have changed so much because now people like, let's say about 20 years ago, it was about the art. It was about the music. It was about the look. Now, because of social media, everything is so transparent and open and people want to see inside of your life and they want to fall in love with you before anything before you even try to sell them anything sell them any music any product any brand they want to fall in love with you they want to know who you are they want to see what your personality is all about um i think part of that has to do a lot with how things are sold now so in the past if you saw a flyer for an event, you're like, you know what? I'm going to go check that out and see what they're about. You get physically in the room and then you decide whether you like it or not, right? Oh, I like this. I'm going to come back again. Oh, I don't like this. I'm never going to come back. It's different now. 
they want to people want to know who you are before they even you know buy a ticket or mm -hmm. drive down to the concert you've got to prove yourself on social media first before people will invest in you so um that's definitely a different component and it's not always easy kind of finding that space you know finding that space of um what is going to reel people in and and what is your niche as an artist i think now you have to know what that is more than ever um if you really want to grow your fan your fan base mm -hmm. I mean that's that's a great point. As an, uh, I've completely forgot to ask you, how you were coping up in this pandemic? How was uh, th did your line of work got affected by the pandemic? Of course it did. I had shows um, lined up. I had I was seeking a new residency type situation where that's where you have a relationship with the venue and you you come and you perform X amount of days a month and mm -hmm. and things like that, so people know mm -hmm. where to find you. Mm -hmm. um, but here's the thing, I'm such an optimistic and like, I'm a, I'm a fighter. Like it doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to find some way to survive through it. And that's good. I decided that's to kind of like really just throw myself into music music boardroom and build music music boardroom as much as possible. And, um, connecting with people like yourself, doing podcasts, hosting podcasts, birthing a podcast, writing a book, writing a couple of books, nice. um, putting together a merch store putting together conferences and workshops. So there's there's lots of other opportunity. I think um, we just have to find it because it's there. Mm -hmm. That's great. And you know, that that's actually a good segue. Can you explain what is the music meets the boardroom? How you came up with the name and what is the origin and what is the services that you provide for the artists? Absolutely. So music meets the boardroom. It started out as music meets business. Mm -hmm. And I was I was already deciding to host the workshops and things like that in a boardroom. And then someone mentioned to me, like, why don't you make it music meets the boardroom? And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know about that. I was like, okay, I like it. And I stuck mm -hmm. with it. And I think it's a great, amazing idea. The goal with music meets the boardroom is to help artists feel empowered in leading and talking about their business mm -hmm. in a setting where they may feel like intimidated, you know, like think about if you, with your podcast, as mm -hmm. your podcast grows, you never know what opportunities might open up for you. And someone may say, Hey, you know, I want to meet with you and talk about uh, a sponsorship or something like that. And when you walk into that room and they start negotiating with you, you want to be ready to, you ready, you want to be ready to negotiate with them, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Exactly. I, I wanted to create a space for artists like yourself and myself to just to like bounce off of each other and to get comfortable with that type of dialogue. And so that we can make the best decisions on behalf of our musical businesses, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, our investments. Yeah. So how was it uh, like, uh, what, what artists did you encounter Did were, uh, were they like hard headed or they had a vision in their head that they want someone else's help just to, you know, you know, just to paint the picture or it was much more of like, uh, hey, dude, I'm just a musician and I play guitar or I sing and I want to make it into business. How was it? How they approach you? Believe it or not, the people that connect with Music Music Boardroom are artists who are already in action. Wow. OK. And that is really powerful. And that is what. I, I want to be associated with and, and where I want to support because if they're already in action and they're hungry, then I'm like, I'm your biggest cheerleader. I am your biggest cheerleader. I'm going to help you any way that uh, I can and my, my team. Um, we're going to do our best in, in the way that, um, in the areas that you may need help that we can help you. And if we can't, we will help you find the people that is the best fit for you that'll help you grow and, and mm -hmm. elevate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so and then here's here's a wonderful thing that I love about Music Music Support Room. Music Music Support Room attracts people of all backgrounds, demographics, religions, spiritual pra like super spiritual practices, professions, um, creative industries. Like I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. That's crazy. I mean, obviously, but uh, the thing is, like, uh, we as I told you off air, we've never had 
such an outlet over here that someone help us out with the right tools, which is the slogan of Music Meets the Boardroom. By the way, I love the name. I forgot to mention this. I love the name. The name Thank it you. has that wow factor in it. It's just crazy good. So as I was saying, we never, it's not that we never, we, we never had it. Like until now, no one exists. The, the, we had one record label, but again, they were kind of selective with which artist or which band they want to sign. I mean, as I told you off air, over here is much more of what brings in the crowd, what makes the cash. So they cannot just invest on anyone and, you know, just, you know what, we're going to start investing in your band because your music is popular, let's say, on Facebook or Instagram. You have 15,000 followers. It's not like this. It, sometimes they need some sort of, a, uh, how to say, down payment from you as well, like to help you out. Mm. And then they will examinate you or like test you like in few gigs here and there. And if you can pull out the crowd... If you get that reaction, then it works out a bit in your favor. But we never had it in like a larger scale. So if you can shed more light, is it like this in the U.S. as well? Or I mean, uh, or is it a different ball game? How it is? Is it like, uh, am, am I talking something out of the box or not? Or No, I, many of those aspects are very prevalent here as well. You know, you have some venues who will only book if you are an artist at a certain caliber. Mm -hmm. You have some venues who are dedicated to indie artists and want to provide a start. And so they will allow indie artists and things like that. There's different dynamics. And we deal with certain types of issues here that are so frustrating as well. And that's one thing that I think I had posted something like last week that if like a door doesn't open, build your own door. Exactly, yeah, I saw that post. So um, I truly believe in artists taking the power in their own hands and creating opportunity for themselves and building something. And let me tell you, at first, when you start building it, they're gonna they'll be like, oh, they're over there building something. All right, we're not paying attention. And then mm. after a while, when you start building something and it starts growing legs, they're gonna be looking like, whoa, and they're gonna be wanting to invest in what you're doing, the shows that you're putting together in your garage or wherever, they're gonna be wanting to know what's going on. They're gonna be like, oh, you know what? You're doing a great job, you know, bringing out the neighborhood here. Why don't you come down and perform in my venue or something like that? So um, I say, you know, build, build your own and let them come to you. Well, again, I mean, why I'm saying this because we over here, we kind of like, uh, as I told you, we're kind of self-centered. Uh, it's not self-centered. It's like uh, we are much more focused on the whole metal and rock community because we're trying to, as I told you, we're, we're trying to establish that understanding that you can count on us and we can draw a crowd because we've shown it in different occasions that uh, we made gigs like we, uh, there, we did a series... Actually, I didn't do it, but I was part of the part of the series, and it was a very successful series called Desert Experiment. So basically, it's a collaboration of 30 plus local musicians from different bands, and we just make five, four to five sets of different covers or originals, with different members of each band collaborating. So that was one of the most successful sessions that we ever had, and. It was crazy, like the, like the outcome and the audience attendance, it was just crazy because everyone was just like, you know, getting the vibe and they were really getting into it. But it reached down to the part that, you know, the, you know, the, the venue is not breaking even. They're not uh, getting what they want. So they stopped uh, investing in the local artists unless you are bringing down an international act. Then the local artists can join on the, on the, on the, on the booking card so it's just stupid stupid things like this kind of frustrate us in a way that you know what man i'm trying my best over here to you know establish that thing and every time something comes in the middle and just you know throws it away yeah. for us it's just crazy yeah and um we we deal with some things like that here as well and what i kind of started doing was taking a step back and putting myself in the shoes of the venue owner mm -hmm. and saying, okay, why did they come to this conclusion? One and two, 
they, okay, so they're running this business and they've got to pay the bills, right? They got to pay the electricity. They got to pay all these things. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective of the business owner, how can I come up with a solution where we both win? And what I find is like business owners, like venue owners, when you have like a more business type conversation, like if, if they realize that you're tapping into their space, they're more likely to listen, like their ears perk up because they're not used to creatives like uh, having dialogue like that. So they're like, whoa, hold up. Okay, what are you talking about? Because you're talking about actually like making money. Mm -hmm, exactly, <laughs> and yeah. um, so I even with myself, I challenge myself to take a step back and say, okay, I let me see myself as the owner of this business. Okay, how do I make this a win-win for both myself and for this venue? And that's how I would even start the conversation. I'm like, hey, I'm here. I want to chat about, you know, playing your venue. I'm not just here to play your venue. I want to make this a win-win situation for both of us. So mm -hmm. can I have 10 minutes of your time to, to, to talk about how we can actually do that? Mm -hmm. How much money do you need to bring in to, to, to make this a profitable, profitable experience for you? And how can we work together to do that for both of us? Because sometimes venues, they can also, there's some things that they can do to help artists be successful, local artists be successful. They can help with marketing and they may not know how to help with marketing. They may not have the resources to help with marketing. We can ask them, how can we support you in this as well as you support us in this? Mm -hmm. You know, do we need to show up a few, a month early and make sure you have all the marketing material that you need? Do we need to schedule your posts for you? Do we, what do we need to do? Do we need to make some phone calls for you? Is there someone we can work with here that can help us? We can partner with, with the marketing. Mm -hmm. um, venues do, do have to take some level of responsibility for some of that as well. Cause we need their support. We need their support. Mm -hmm. And I got my friend over here. He, he was actually my bandmate, uh, Ali. And he's one of the legit local musicians in the scene. And uh, he's a bassist from a band called Svengali. They're actually kind of uh, big in the scene, as in they, like the, they made it. And he's asking, is like, hi there, can you please explain what are the obstacles for a new artist that might go through in the U.S.? Obstacles that new artists might go through in the U.S.? Yes. Well, first and foremost, just being seen as relevant <laughs> mm -hmm. because here it's not all parts of us, but there's a strong parts of us where if you haven't already made it, people are not paying attention. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be a popular artist for people to even pay attention. But, um, there's a few artists who I think do something very well that a lot of artists can take note of. And that is like focusing in on your own lane and not worrying about what other people are doing, not worrying about who has the most followers or who's packing up, just like really focusing in on, okay, I got a gig here. I'm, I'm, I'm making everything successful. And what I'm finding is that artists that do that, they grow and elevate so quickly and, and they kind of come out the woodworks. Like people are not paying attention to them. And then all of a sudden, they, they grow popularity because no one was in their way to mess anything up, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, there's no distractions around. So I think that's the hardest thing is just, just being seen as relevant. Um, social media plays a huge part in that as well. Mm -hmm. Even though many of us know <laughs> that's not always the case. Like, yes, you may have a lot of followers, but that doesn't equate to a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't equate to um packing a venue because there's some people who have, may have less less followers but they have more loyal followers mm -hmm. um one other thing that i want to share that i think is really valuable for us as artists is that you can still be very successful with a few thousand followers on social media if they're loyal followers mm -hmm. you can still be, make have a lucrative career um there was some artists I can't remember her name, but she was like a, she's, she's an American artist. Um, she's an older lady. She made $50,000 wow. okay. in 30 days with 1000 people watching her live stream. That's it. 
it, and this is a mega a mega artist like but she only had a thousand people watch her stream and she made fifty thousand dollars and people say that all the time you don't need a huge following to make a lot of money if you've got super loyal fans that's all that matters one other thing here i go talking i tell you i'm a talker too please one go other ahead. thing <laughs> that i learned is that it's important to take care of our fans that we have now mm -hmm. versus like i've got to have more followers i got to have more fans and we're focused on like gaining and building and then the people who are loyal to us we neglect and we lose versus like just really loving on those existing fans and making sure that they stay super loyal because that those are people who are going to buy who are going to continuously show up and support you they're the ones who's going to spread the word on your band and your business and because of that other people are going to come automatically you don't even have to worry about that they'll automatically come Mm -hmm. And I got another friend of mine, which is an OG musician in the scene. I mean, he's he's uh, t he tuned in with his uh, other uh, profile called the Challengers, which he does, po like he does the uh, podcasts and like videos on basketball. And now he released a new edition, which is called the Food Challengers. And he does like you know he does uh, basically his concept is to uh, compare. Uh, like the best thing ever in the world with different alternative. It's just a crazy, crazy concept. Uh, his name is Mike F uh, Filion. Hi. He's uh, from a band called Sandwash, old school band. I'm talking about 2009, 2010, way, way before that as well. They were very active back in the days and he's in the house. He's saying, hi, what's up? He's saying, uh, uh, he's saying, hi, Latoya. Hi, Ahmed. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining, Mike. <laughs> And uh, Ali is asking another question. He's saying, which is more important, having a better marketing or a better product? Both are very important. However, mm -hmm. what I'm seeing a trend, which is not a good trend, <laughs> is marketing. Great marketing can sell anything. At the end of the day, great marketing can sell anything. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. And it's happening right now. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. If you don't have a great product to back up that great marketing, we don't have repeat customers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if we have a great product that backs up great marketing, whoa, they're impressed. I had a conversation with a friend of mine who works for a merch store. And we had this very conversation where um, T-shirts, Right. So let's say we have great marketing and we're selling our T-shirts as artists, our, our merch. Mm -hmm. But the T-shirts are like hard and they scratchy and stuff like that. Your the fan quality. bought it, but yeah. they're not going to wear it. You mm -hmm. know, when they go to the store, they're just going to look at it and throw it back in the closet. But what if that T-shirt was so soft and comfortable? It's the T-shirt that they're like, oh, I'm I'm. I'm having a convo and chilling today and I'm putting on my soft tee, you know? Mm -hmm. So your t-shirt, your brand t-shirt is what they're going to pick up and wear just to go down to the store. And now people are seeing your advertisement. So taking the time to invest in great product is very important. Let me give you another scenario. And this is actually happening right now. There is a particular um, social media um, influencer, not going to mention any names, mm -hmm. has a huge following. This lady will sell you anything and people will buy <laughs> mm. and she will sell water. You know, she'll just slap her name on the front and say water, you know, and people will sell it out. Um, she sells books and all these things, but the love has not gone into some of her products and it's, it's caused some problems and some issues for her. And so we want to avoid that. And by putting love into our products, we can avoid those type of things. Well, that's, I mean, yes, we, I, I think a lot of people will agree on this because uh, we, we understand this as well. Like, you know, sorry if I'm using this is like, it, it reaches to a point that even if they fart into a mic, people will buy the album, you know, this is exactly, yeah. So exactly. I'm sorry if I, if I use very ridiculous <laughs> example. It, it works. <laughs> so yeah, Mike is saying that, um, uh, lots of good advices here. Core fans are much a bit uh, are, are are such a big deal, and that's great. Big and deal. and he's saying that, uh, and he's talking about the the whole uh, uh, social media thing. He's saying TikTok focused music is becoming such a big deal in the in Asia now. 
uh, is like uh, uh, annoying for some, but shows uh, how music can have a more the uh, 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 sorry that music can have more dimension uh, and have uh, for for audience uh, uh, for audiences consumption. What are uh, you know what? Let me just read it again. TikTok focused on a lot of uh, becoming such a big deal in the in, in Asia now and annoying for some, but uh, but shows how music can have a new dimension for the audience consumption. What are uh, what are Latoya's thoughts on this? Sorry if I butchered that comment, on Mike. <laughs> on TikTok, um, I hope I um, understand the question right. So TikTok has opened up new avenue for ways for music to be used um with people i you know what for me i say use it to your advantage and if you have released music your music should be accessible through those type of apps you know for you to be able to like do the dancing and stuff like that mm -hmm. so if you release music get on there and dance to your own music and post 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 encourage people to post um your music um i believe there are several artists many quite a few artists who've um been able to to become platinum artists just off TikTok, um, people using their music off TikTok. And I really? say, go just for now, it. I mean, TikTok is very new. It's like, what, how many yeah. months is it now? It's only a few years old. Few years old. Oh, oh okay. I'm, I'm late to the party. Um, yeah, I think, I think TikTok is, tick, well, maybe, is it been five years, four or five years, maybe? It's um, not, I'm not I don't sure. think it's that, um, I know it's been renamed and rebranded a few times over X amount of years and things like that. And it's, I believe it's now the number one social media tool. I think. Well, it's think now it now a lot of businesses are uh, like you know uh, uh, transitioning w their whole uh, products and their whole strategies with TikTok. And actually, there is uh, like uh, uh, there is a way to do it as well. There is like as I, as I was telling you, there is a course behind doing all this uh, social media marketing. How you can use those platforms for your advantage. And it's just crazy. I mean, yeah, and uh, uh, but, uh, Mike is saying, yeah, yes, Ahmed. I am loving to these be... questions. I am it... loving these questions. Keep the questions coming. <laughs> He's saying it used to be called Musically. Yes, it was. That's right. He's really? absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. It was. They renamed it. Um, they renamed it. I think it. I think it was owned by a different company, and then they renamed it, and then they. So it's had like a couple of different names. Mm -hmm. So so okay, you know what? It's a, it's a good section to talk about this. Uh, how how do you advise? Like okay, I'm I'm sure you work with this with your artists as well. How to work on their marketing, like their online marketing. What is the th let's say three fundamental factors that you tell them to keep in mind when it comes to social marketing? Um, three things. Well, I mean, it One depends. Is... Uh, it depends. If you have more, please. <laughs> Uh, well, I think three things are the most important. Um, one is knowing who you are as an artist, because if you know who you are as an artist, then you know exactly how you want your brand to sit forward and what you want to communicate to your fan. Mm -hmm. This is a process. This is this is a process. For some people, it takes a short period of time. For some people, it takes years. It's just what it is. Um, if it's something that you're, you're having problems with, you can work with somebody to kind of gain some structure around that. I would recommend that if you're an artist who loves to color all over the place like myself. Mm -hmm. I, When it comes to my artistry, I just am everywhere. <laughs> and then also your branding, meaning defining what type of colors are going to be your prevalent colors and styles and things like that. And then also consistency, figuring out like how often you're going to interact with your your fans and you're going to post. Here's the here's the interesting thing, and I had to learn this as an artist is that you and I we're creators, right? We're creating, and it's it feels great, it seems perfect. There's nothing wrong, but our fans are not often creators. Yeah. <laughs> so when we're doing all this coloring and we're doing all this posting and stuff out of what we feel is right they don't understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so we have to provide some structure for our fans so they can understand us. And so um, it's gonna be a little restrictive for us as creatives when we're kind of like 
using certain colors consistently and certain fonts and things like that all the time. Mm -hmm. But for the fan, it's like, oh, I understand exactly what's happening. Um, so yeah, so definitely building like some consistency, defining your brand style colors and things like that. And then knowing who you are as an artist. Well, are, are these uh, applicable for any market as an, uh, uh, sorry, I'm talking about like the music industry market. It, d does it depend on the region or it's really not depending on the region? Like you can apply everything. Yeah. So it's, yes, you can apply it to any, any, any business really, even in music, any sort of business or anything like that. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but like with Music Meets the Boardroom, it's mm -hmm. really consistent. Like the color coding, I use one particular primary color. Um, I'm even going to change some things that don't line up with the brand's um, mm -hmm. colors and fonts and things like that. I'm going to make sure, go back and make sure it's consistent for people who are viewing it. Um, but if you go over to my artist page, I'm uh, all over the place. <laughs> That's my safe space. That's where I can just like let go as an artist and... I do pay the price for that though. Mm -hmm. I, I think I need a little bit more of that over on my artist page. Um, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I need less of it over there and just kind of like wing it and just do whatever. But um, so for me, like the music music support room marketing is like personally too much structure for me. Mm -hmm. But I know that the viewer needs that. Mm -hmm. You <laughs> so, know yeah. what? You know what? That's a good segue. We're going to go watch your music video, Hear Me Roar. And we're going to yes. come back and there is, by the way, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please share this video with your friends. Tell your mama, tell your daddy about the page. Let them know about the page. Let's let's get more traffic in the page and so we can create more content like this for you guys. So we're going to jump into the video, Latoya, and then we're going to come back so you can explain what was the concept, what was the thought process behind it. And whoever is still watching, thank you very much for watching. And if you have more questions, please drop it in the comment section. I'm sure Latoya is more than happy to answer because I'm learning a lot from her and I'm sure everyone over here wants to learn more from you, Latoya. So we will go to the video and come back in a bit. Dark light in the middle of a fight Love, hate Tell me which one do you create Drink, eat Feed the secrets that we keep
Latoya. Yes. What an, what an awesome video and what an awesome voice. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> Seriously, your voice is angelic. I'm not joking. I'm not trying to sugarcoat you, but please tell us the insights. What is the thought process? What was, what is the song about? And please tell us more. <laughs> Yes. So that song kind of came, was birthed out of just the, the struggle of life, you know, the, the struggle of just trying to get ahead in life, trying to just survive mm -hmm. and do something different with your life and kind of get out of like the norms of life. You know what I mean? And so that's where that, that song came from. And in the, in the process of like really becoming in alignment with myself, I realized that all these struggles and all these battles and having to face reality of what was in front of me was happening. And so visually, I wanted to communicate that in the video. I'm not physically in the video, um, but the video definitely tells the story and communicates the message of the song. Well, we got mm -hmm. we got people commenting. You know what? I'll, I'll jump back to the comments. And uh, Mike is saying, uh, Latoya, uh, uh, considering most of an uh, artist's income comes from live performance and 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 merchandise, will will there will be a future where people pay for the record music, or will it be a basic freebie through which artists promote their other offerings? That's a great question. And that's something we're, we're facing and dealing with right now as artists. Um, you, first and foremost, you've got to figure out how you want to strategize it for yourself. And I think it starts with the end in mind. So where do you ultimately want to be? How much money do you ultimately want to make? What are the type of, um, opportunities do you want to experience? And these are things that, you know, you definitely write down and say, okay, how do I get to this point? What journey, what path do I need to take to get to this point? And really our music is turning into our business card. I had a guest that actually used those terms. And I thought that was really fascinating because right now we have a lot of people who are like pushing their music. They're pushing their music. Look at my music, look at my music, mm -hmm. but there's nothing behind it. Like, okay, you're sharing your music, then what? There's no merch. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for them to experience. You don't have a website for them to like go and interact and follow. You don't have an app. You don't have all these things. So um, the music draws people in. And then how do we keep them? What are we going to do to keep them at that point? And so that's where it goes back to where I'm saying, like, think about the end in mind. Keep the end in mind at the beginning. So, for example, let's say you wanted to be a huge international podcaster that everyone knows by first name, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, what do you do now to start building that path? Do you make your podcast, uh, what, well, what's the most important to you? Is, is notoriety more important to you or actually having a steady income that you grow from your podcast? If it's notoriety, then okay, then you have, this podcast that's free, that goes out to everyone, that everyone can access and everyone knows your name. But if you know you want to make a living, then you know you've got to start setting it up for like sponsorships mm -hmm. and being able to have people advertise and things like that. So there's different things you have to do um, to line up for you for what you ultimately want. And I think what kind of gets kind of gray for us is we don't necessarily think about that. You know, we're just kind of thinking about what we're doing and like okay this is supposed to create some sort of opportunity we don't know exactly what that is mm -hmm. but because of that we're kind of like all can go anywhere we don't have any control of our careers mm -hmm. so definitely define what you ultimately want and that will help shape whether you need to give free music or if you don't some people are very different about this some people will say don't ever give your music away for free some mm -hmm. people will say that because they say you know the fan really the fan, we set the tone for what the fan will, will do. So if you give your music out for free mm -hmm. at the beginning, it's going to be harder for them to pay for it later, probably. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
So you've got to ask yourself, so like, what's the goal of that? Um, and then also, if you start out the gate selling your music, that's great. But what are you going to do to like bring in those consistent fans? And it's a good thing to to put a price tag on it, but it's going to be a little bit more challenging to bring people in because once mm -hmm. again, they got to know who you are before they're going to spend their money. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got Brent in the house. Brent is one of my old school friends. Thank you very much, Brent, for tuning in. He's saying sorry for uh, how much I did miss uh, and, and it's better that uh, it goes longer. And he's saying, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, commenting on the video. He's saying power in those pipes, much respect. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Ali is saying, what do you think killed the music? Well, that's very subjective, yeah? It depends. It is subjective. Um, like, I don't see anything killed pop music. Sorry if I'm cutting you off, you know, like... No, you're fine. I, I needed some time to kind of think about that. <laughs> but yes, music is being shifted and it's showing up differently. There was a time when someone could just release music and everybody would run to the stores and pay 12 bucks for a CD mm -hmm. or, you know, pay 20 bucks for something. And now it's like people are not willing to pay for the music. Part of it is because now we've got streaming tools. And then also as artists, collectively as a whole, we're not demanding the same thing. So you're an artist who's charging $10 for your album no, somebody doesn't want to pay it. They can go down and stream somebody else's album for free. So what's the point of buying yours? You know, mm -hmm. um, it goes back to the conversation of them falling in love with you, so, falling in love with you, selling you. So is this is so basically what I'm getting out of this is that there is a criteria that you need to go by. Basically, it's like planning your business module and going step by step, basically like uh testing the waters and not going all in from the get-go but put put your love and passion in your craft and try to draw the audience towards yourself then you can start naming your price or you should have a price from the get-go i would write down exactly what you want so mm -hmm. let's say for example your goal is to have a successful merch store you may have that written down and your fans don't know it's coming yet. They don't know you're about to hit them with some merch requests in mm -hmm. six months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't need to know that. But up until that time, they're in love with you. They're amazing. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. You're amazing. Awesome. And then you hit them with that. Oh, you know, I got some t-shirts out. Go make sure you go get your t-shirts. Oh, I love mm -hmm. that person. Let's go get some t-shirts and support them. Mm -hmm. So, um, once again, it's about selling you, falling in love with you. At that point, you can sell you can sell them, like I said, a cup of water. And somebody will yeah. buy it because they just love you, you know? So, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, uh, again, I, I don't think we're too far from each other when it comes to the business side of it. That it's uh, uh, some basic formulas that everyone needs to follow. But again, that whole creative department is the place that we can shine and... Basically, it can. Uh, it's the same way in any business, as you mentioned. So, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. But you know, it's just that sometimes I don't know. But again, I'm, why I'm keep on saying this, and I hope one day I change this mentality in myself because the way that we saw this community of musicians in Dubai grow, it was much more of like us pushing, pushing, and pushing. But again something or you know one way or another some obstacle just pops out like a pokemon is like yo hello no you can't do that you're not allowed to go to this warehouse to play this you you need to get permissions for these things uh you know a lot of regional let's say regional policies were involved in our side which it frustrates some of the musicians like you know for for instance myself uh our genre of music is kind of like the black sheep of metal, like the hardcore people, like the extreme metalheads, they don't want us. And the softcore rockers, they don't want us. We're like, you know, in the middle. We're like uh, heavy and soft. And like, you know, we were always there. Like we either play as a last band in the, in, in the card or we play for the janitors way when the doors are open. You know, you get what I'm going with it. So yeah. it was a very up and down dynamic for us. We never had like a solid wave of just, you know, okay, 
we're going well, we're going well, then suddenly someone helps you out, you get a bit of fame, then, you know, it, it never been like this, and I, I don't know, I, I don't have anyone else to blame unless, I mean, uh, other than us, because I'm, I might get heat because of this, I don't know, I feel that the music scene in Dubai, it's much more of, by default, turned into a competitive environment, for no reason. Like, so you're saying it's competitive? Is that what you're saying? It feels competitive, Latoya. It's like, um, okay. it's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain. That's why I said I might get heat because, the, you know, there there is different perspective into this whole thing. Like people look at it differently. There is like groups that they work together and they do it together. And some other people, they can't do it because they're not part of that group. It's some sort of like this. I'm, I'm not saying yeah, I'm not saying it's like, it's like niche, this. like um like clicks like they call them clicks here yes in it, the, is, it is it like is it's it's not clickish but some sort of clickish it's not they're not like wide open and like you know hey we're a click but you know behind the curtain it's kind of clickish you know of which we yeah. talk about it with uh, within ourselves it's like man and people telling me like no dude it's not like this and which I see it differently is just again comes back to that point as like man this things frustrate the hell out of me it's just crazy things it's just like it, th that's why i'm i'm to be honest with you i'm really stopping myself i'm name dropping and saying a lot of things it's just like i'm trying to put it all in a nutshell and give you an example of how we we were doing things in dubai and this whole pandemic was just the cherry on top that stopped everything like yeah. It stopped so many things all over the world, you know? Yeah. I, I think that it's it's forcing us as creatives to actually get creative, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it's forcing us to show up differently. At the same time, I, I'm i such an optimistic because I see so much opportunity right now mm -hmm. for creatives. I, for, I, I feel like the universe is, like, forcing us to show up differently. Mm -hmm. Like, just stopping everything and saying, you know what? We've been doing this for so long. It's enough of that. It probably hasn't worked, been working for a while. So it's time to come up with something different. It's time to create something different that works for us, you know, because everyone's having the same issue um, all over the world, um, including here. And when the pandemic hit, it made me realize, I'm like, whoa, we were really kind of like not being creative in art, in our music, in how we was like sharing our work with the world and now we're being stretched and um so so yeah i i hear what you're saying we have that here too um we even we even have that within genres it's and it's a very interesting thing i kind of get so frustrated with it myself mm -hmm. but once again i think it goes back to what i was saying about you know creating your own path or finding a way to create your own path information is knowledge find learn as much figure out as much as much you much as you can and use it to your advantage and Ali is saying competition makes you grow and become better, which, yeah, I yes. agree 150 percent, Ali. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about, man. It's just uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it's just that, you know, sometimes, you know what, you know what? It's a good segue. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think I told you this, Latoya, but I do a trivia section with my guest. Like I, I call it the rapid fire rounds, which I give you two. Uh, two options which you can choose like you know choose the one you like and if you want to explain why you chose that option the like all the camera angle is yours so you're ready to go in and dive into it yes let's go for it and whoever is watching thank you very much for watching share this video with your friends let them know about the page and please join yes. us with this trivia section with Latoya let me know what you guys <laughs> what is your what is your selection so uh, moving ahead soul or R&B R&B. Okay. A rap or pop? Ooh. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say pop. you never been okay. into rap? I do like, I, and I, that's why I hesitated on it <laughs> because I was like, I don't know. Cause I'm kind of like, there's certain portions of like pop and rap that I love. And then there's certain portions of pop and rap that I don't like. So mm -hmm. I could go either way on both of those. Okay. That's great. Fair enough. Moving on jazz or funk. Oh, jazz hands down. 
Okay. Tina Turner or Mariah Carey? Oh, that's that's a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Turner. I'm going to go with Tina Turner because I've been listening to a lot of her music lately. I just mm. like just pulled it up. I'm like, I haven't listened to Tina Turner stuff in so long, um, but they're both brilliant and talented artists. Man, I I mean, I, I wasn't from that era of Tina Turner, but I was from the era of Mariah Carey. And God, oh, God, man, her first album. Man, that lady has the pipes. She does. She's great. Okay, moving on. Do you prefer performing or managing? Managing. Oh, you really gave up on the whole performing side of the thing. I, you know, I love to perform, but it's something about, like... I love the hustle of like the game, you know, mm, mm. I love that. Like it fuels me and I had no, I had no intentions or desire to be on like the back end, just be fully a performer. But now I am loving it. I'm loving the game of business. That's great. That's great. So moving on, you need certain connections to make it in the business. Yes or no? Now you can make it with new connections that have not always been there. Okay. You're not always needing some of the same connections as before. Are we uh, talking about the record labels here or uh, as in you're talking about the online marketing? Um, music, just in the music industry. I mean, you can make it successfully without even being signed to a label. So um, you can hire your own management. You can hire your own marketing team. You can have a distribution agreement um, uh, and contract without being signed to a label. You, There's so many options now. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, moving on. Michael Jackson or Prince? You give some these like these should be simple questions, but they're by not. By the way, by the way, so many people hate me for this trivia section. <laughs> you know, like I put you in I the know, spotlight. I know, but it's so good at the same time. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go with Michael Jackson. Oh, the king of pop, obviously. I mean, which uh, I mean, to his defense, Prince is a was a great musician, and he's a legend. He's just a crazy, crazy guy. I loved his music, which I'm not into that type of music. But you know, whenever we're in a bar or something, when that music pops out, nah, you enjoy it. So yeah. moving on, uh, sending me your, oh, by the way, this is like, uh, it's, uh, it's much more of like a, um, how to say it, a definition. Sending me your demo days are gone. Yes or no, or it depends. I think it depends. Cause I think there are people, you have people who still are searching for artists. And let me, let me share something with you about that because a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of uh, indie, indie artists don't realize that there are people who are scouting for talent every single day and they're following you. They're watching you on social media. When you release music formally through a formal distribution channel and you, you set up your music, you know, to where they can find it, mm -hmm. they'll go and look at your stuff. They'll go and look and they'll follow and they're like, you know what? I like this artist, but they kind of need some more development. So I'm just going to follow them to see how they evolve and grow. And oftentimes we think that people are not watching, but they are. They are watching. And that goes back to something else. I want to mention this. This is so important as artists mm -hmm. to not only create music, but if you're investing money and you're investing time into um, building your art in your band, make sure that you also take the time to trademark the name of your your entity to which, your brand. Which you because post, um, yeah. people will, there are people who will go out and if they see that you are making some movement and strive with your name, they, they know where to go to look up and see if you own that intellectual property. And if you don't own it, some people will trademark your name behind your back mm -hmm. and they don't have a problem with doing that. Exactly, exactly. And uh, before moving on, uh, Brent is asking, Latoya, as much as I hate saying how some mainstream artists display lack of talent and seem, uh, see, uh, sorry, uh, seen uh, more image focused as, uh, uh, as a manager, is it, uh, is it a different strategy in structuring? Let me make sure I understand the question correctly. So we've got mainstream artists who are not that talented. There's so many more talented people out there. And mm -hmm. when you say structuring, what do you, what does that mean exactly? Uh, Brent, can you elaborate more on the comment, please? So, you know, 
So anyway, yeah. so we're going to move on with the list until Brent comes okay. back. So um, next one is, uh, is it easier to make it in the U.S. as an artist or it's an, uh, it's an anything? Uh, sorry, uh, sorry. Is it easier to make it in the U.S. or this is a myth? Actually, um, the U.S. is probably the hardest place to make it. Mm -hmm. um, at least that's what I've been told that. And that's why I think so many artists from around the world, including in the U.S., strive to make it in the U.S. because it's the hardest music market to break. A lot of artists leave the U.S. and go overseas and have um, lucrative careers mm -hmm. because... I think there's certain parts of the world where music is still an intricate part of our lives and it's still highly valued. Um, music here in the U.S. is kind of a little bit of like, it's important, but it's kind of like pastime kind of thing, a little mm -hmm. bit in some in some ways. Mm -hmm. So if you make it here, then people are really paying attention to you. Awesome. And Brent is saying, uh, he's saying between a talented artist and a gimmick. Yeah, um, that is true. And here's the reality of the situation. A label can make anybody famous. Mm -hmm. it, it's a reality. If they put enough money and marketing, as we talked about earlier, it's all about marketing. If you have great marketing, you can sell somebody a, a cup of a, water, any, a cup of water, anything. <laughs> so, you know, if yes, there are artists who you look at and you're like, oh my gosh, these people are not very talented. We know people who are way more talented than these people. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just say, you know what? Don't get discouraged about that. Don't let that take too much of your time. Don't envy where they are because we don't know what price they pay to get there and what they're dealing with mm -hmm. on the back end of their life. And um, you may end up being in a more blessed situation than they are. And oftentimes, you know, we see artists who are very big and successful and they're having a lot of like mental issues and depression and, and drugs and suicide and things like that, because the, there's a lot of compromise, you know, that happens in their lives to, to get to where they are. Mm -hmm. And so um, being able to have a peaceful life and still have some truth to yourself as you're growing is something very valuable that we should not ever lose or compromise on so that we can have our whole selves as we become successful and i love that post that you put on your instagram which was uh, don't ask any other people how you need to make it because their their dream their way of doing it is different than yours just follow your dream yeah. Well, I, right. I kind of screwed up the whole post, but that was what... <laughs> no, you said it. You got the point across, and that's what matters. And that's true, because oftentimes we'll ask people who have no experience in what we're doing for opinions and thoughts. And there are wise people, right? Mm -hmm. There are wise people who haven't experienced something, but they're going to give you good, thorough advice. And then you got these people who just want to just tell you all kinds of stuff, and they don't know what they're talking about. Let me give an example. So I had someone who told me, well, I think you should expand Music Meets the Boardroom. I think that it's too niche. -y. And I said, well, why would I expand to a market that's not where I'm targeting? That doesn't make any sense. So mm -hmm. why would I do that? And the person didn't know what they were talking about. And so now I'm learning to let it go in one ear and out the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, you know, just take the uh, those, uh, what you call it? constructive feedback and whatever right. it is like uh, take it in take the good out of it throw the bad right. outside and just work on your thing so uh moving in uh are you a team player or a solo person i'm both i'm both i think that as an artist i'm a solo i'm solo all day i like to be alone so i can create in in and just like be with my thoughts. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, but as like a businesswoman, I'm team all day. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, moving on. Making it is um, making it as a singer songwriter is easier than a band. Yes or no or depends nowadays. Sorry, I completely screwed up the question. <laughs> I think um, it's about the same. But I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you one element about a band that mm -hmm. solo artists don't have to necessarily deal with. Please. So with a band, you're dealing with personalities. You got so many people in the, per in the band and everybody's gotta be happy. Egos. Which is hard, egos, you nailed it. If 
if you're dealing with egos and that's a whole nother element because everybody needs to be happy in order to grow and mm. everybody has to be on the same page if you've got three band members who just care about oh i just want to make music and then you've got three band members are like i want to actually make a career out of this then now everything's in balance and what's going to happen you know and then also you see with bands where they'll get super successful and then you'll have one a band member who falls out and then the band starts to fall apart at like the height of their career mm -hmm. so i think being in a band is a little bit more challenging okay that's i mean you just <laughs> nailed it <laughs> that's what we go through every freaking day yes. man. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on money money can make you famous even if you have uh if you have released bad music it's a very subjective uh question but does really that really plays a plays a part nowadays there's probably some truth in that mm -hmm. because if everybody knows your name and your face that alone brings people to you you know mm -hmm. so yeah there's definitely some truth in that yep uh okay moving on alicia oh, keys <laughs> i like to pump up my hair sorry okay? <laughs> your hair looks great your hair looks great and, you. I, and i and, and you're making me jealous because i'm bald <laughs> anyway moving on alicia keys or amy winehouse Oh, God bless her. I'm going to go with Amy Winehouse. Man, that that lady was just great. I love <laughs> I love her music. It's just crazy. And the last one for this section, music can be evil. Yes or no or it's a myth. It's not. Well, we're talking about subliminal messages. Is those things are really yes. accurate? Does it really exist? Yes. Yes. Music is very powerful. Music is very, very powerful. Music is a powerful tool that can be used. Um, it's influential, you know? Music can create certain types of energy and certain types of reactions. Music has words. Like, music is like a soft way of getting your message across, of whatever that message is. So if, if I came to you and I said, I don't like what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might get offended. But if I walked up to you and I said, I don't like what you're wearing today. You know what I mean? Like you're going, you might kind of bounce a little bit, but I'm offending you at the same time, you know? So <laughs> music is very powerful. And so people know that. People know that. It can move the world. Think about when you go to a concert and there's thousands of people in the venue listening and jumping and, you know, so yes it is and mm. it is used in, in such way in many cases here's here's something that a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. is that sound if you go up and you do if you go and you do some research about sound there's certain sounds that generate certain types of reactions in mm. the body vibrations so vi exactly vibrations mm. so sometimes in popular music you'll see some of that pop up and i'm like i my ears go up or they, I try to close them because I'm like, I don't want to hear that. I don't know what you're wanting me to do, but I don't want to do it. Exactly. <laughs> and so, so yes, it is true. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we, we came across these things on a very early age and like, you know, uh, I'm, I, I think the guys will hate me, but I need to ask this question as an, you know what, before that someone commented is like, uh, Ali is saying, can you have a nine to five day job and do music? On, on 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 sorry if uh, can you have a nine to five day, day job and you can do music on the side will it work yes you can do that but at some point you will have to decide on what is going to sit forward you know mm -hmm. at some point you're going to have to figure out where you're going to place all of your energy but you can build out a you can It's not that you have to like just drop everything. You can wait until something looks very promising and is growing to where you can't handle it all on your own or, or you know, you're starting to see profit and then you can, you know, go off. But um, oftentimes people just say, you know what, I'm going into music. They do it and it, it works for them. Mm hmm. And, Brent and there's a lot of successful artists who are not on our TV, who are still insanely successful. Mm hmm. And Brent is saying sound psychology. Well, he's referring to the whole evil side of the music, which I was getting to. Do you know the band Tool? Yes. So 
uh, I don't want to call myself a cultish guy, but you know, we're I, I'm a hardcore Tool fan. Like, <laughs> but when me and uh, me and uh, me and uh, one of my buddies, we were sitting down and we were just like reflecting. You know, we, we both are like you know Toolaholic guys, so we were just like, man, the music is so evil. It's like it's too evil. It's just like for. It, but we took it in an artistic way. But imagine someone else who's listening to this and subconsciously getting those programs in him where, you know, his, his, uh, his system is kind of getting triggered somehow, subconsciously. It's just bad. It's just wrong. Yeah, it's, it's reality. You mm. know, it is reality. Sometimes you don't think about that stuff. Like you said, you're like, I'm enjoying this. I really like this. But then when you stop for a moment, you listen, you're like, whoa what am i listening to like <laughs> yeah it, it's true it is so so true and the same thing is with like television what we see mm -hmm. on television i used to be a huge um law and order fan have do you are you familiar with that show yes obviously <laughs> yeah i was i mean i would sit like on a saturday and watch like the reruns because i love law and order mm -hmm. and then one day i said what am i watching and i stopped watching it like i just stopped watching it i was like i don't want to watch this anymore <laughs> This is not good. I shouldn't be taking this in. Mm -hmm. And I just start watching it. I actually start watching television altogether. I do not watch television at all. I didn't own a television for many years, actually, because of that subliminal type mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. that are reinforced in the media. I didn't like it. And so I decided I, I didn't want to be a part of that. And so I just stopped watching television and I even like threw away my television. Oh, wow. That's that's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, even I mean, going back to the tool topic, as I, I had a friend who's a musician as well. Uh, he's uh, he was part of a very successful band here called MT Yard Experiment. They were like very progressive and uh, prog uh, prog metal prog rock. So uh, I was giving a ride to somewhere. I, I, I like I wanted to drop him, and I was listening to Tool. I was blasting Tool in my car, and he's like, "Man, uh, there was a time that he was listening to one particular album from Tool, and he's like, man, he was listening to it for a long time that his body kind of got a program." to a certain time to waking up and sleeping mm. it's just like you cannot just understand this from day one it's like the way you get addicted to something but you can see it in music as well you get addicted to some certain vibrations some certain rhythms it's just crazy how tool which I really consider them one of the most you know what for them for me they're they're like a masterpiece four 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 individuals in a band which each one of them is complimenting the like the other guy which i had a tool tribute band in dubai and we were covering their music it's just crazy hard to cope up it's just crazy so for me they're just crazy good and the way they do their like their arrangements their uh, theory and everything is just beyond this world. It's just crazy. I mean, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll stop talking about Tool because if I talk about Tool, I'll just go ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's get back to the main topic of the show, which is that, uh, you know, as you as the slogan of uh, Music Meets the Boardroom is that you help uh, young and uh, upcoming artists with the right tools and the right strategies to accomplish their dream. So... Uh, what is the main factors that you focus on telling your clients? I'm, I'm not trying to take away anything for free from you. You can just, you know. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, you, um, you can just explain We can talk it. about, yeah, whatever. I'm open to this dialogue. And, and thank you for providing a platform to be able to share oh. a, a valuable response to your question, because I think that's very important. Come on. You, you don't need um, to, you don't need to uh, thank me for anything. We're here together. We are, as you said, we're crea like content creators. So we are helping each mm -hmm. other. I'm learning from you. I literally learned a lot from you tonight. So please shed, shed more light on how you actually you go with the plan, you go ahead with the plan with your artists. Right. So first and foremost, um, I have a conversation with um, a client, potential client, and I figure out where they are and where they're struggling. You know, mm -hmm. what type of what what are your needs? And then in, in addition to their needs, I also find out where do they want to be going mm -hmm. back to the end in mind. So anything that we work together on. I, I also, I build a plan around where they want to be and helping to align them in that, that direction. Mm -hmm. Um, 
nothing happens overnight, right? But if we can put some things in place um, where they can be consistent with those steps, then we know that it's going to lead to a certain component or something like that. So um, one thing, several things, I just mentioned several things that are definitely important is, um, of course, social media, having a, a good, strong social media presence is important, but I've been encouraging creatives to own their content as much as possible. And what I mean by that is having your own website or app or a platform where your art lives, that you control it. Mm -hmm. No one else controls it. No one has the ability to limit who has access to your, your art, your product, or your brand. Mm -hmm. So finding a way to like move those fans off of social media onto your website or something like that, because what happens if Instagram decides to start charging everybody to use their service? What happens if some of these tools that we're using decide that they go bankrupt and they're not available anymore? We saw what happened to MySpace. They mm -hmm. were this huge popular platform yep. and literally overnight, they just like died, like overnight. Yeah. What happened to all those people? Even the thing with Vine, same thing. We had people, these huge content creators who are very successful in their platform, their business was completely taken from them. Same thing is happening with TikTok in the US. Mm -hmm. All those people have quit their jobs to be TikTokers and they may not have a platform anymore. So first and foremost, I encourage my clients to build um, their own platform. So, you know, build your website, make sure it's an interactive website and things like that. Mm -hmm. Music, making sure that they have um, music that is, they, that they actually have music, um, and enough music at that, as at that, um, definitely. And making sure that the music represents what they want to, um, portray. what they want to portray. Exactly. Portray moving forward. You know, mm -hmm. are, are you moving in the line musically that you want to be? If not, who do we need to connect you with? Who do, who needs to be producing your music and things like that? Branding. Um, photographers meshing and connecting with the right photographers who are going to capture your story. And, um, there's a lots of things. I also, one thing that I'm really big with, with uh, my clients is their paperwork, oh, <laughs> their okay. contracts, their agreements, their split sheets, their trademarks, their copyrights, everything. So, um, I make sure my clients have certain types of agreements that they're, uh, they're connected with certain uh, CPAs and legal professionals and things like that um, so that they can protect their investment as well. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, I mean, uh, but uh, the thing is like for us in this region, it's, uh, to be honest with you, there is, not, there is a local copyright, but uh, there is, there is n we don't have such a thing as in like a proper international copyright which uh, I, I might have a brand here and I copyright it here and then you can easily just take that brand and copyright it in, in US and get that whole international stamp for yourself and you are the owner. But in Dubai- So, all right, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, it's fine. I wanna, I wanna, I would like for you to elaborate on something. So can you copyright it in Dubai and then go and copyright it in the US as well? Well, again, yeah, you need to, if you want to get that whole international copyright, you need to do it abroad, which, you know, gotcha. where the proper sources are. But over here, it's much more of a local area, you know, they're like, we, we've tried to do it with some of the bands and they were like, you know, it's just a, it's just an ownership type of paper. You have it for yourself and no one else is uh, allowed to use it in this country. But I mean, th that's why we kind of, as I told you, th these are the limitations that we have. They're, like, you know, uh, over here, it's not about like stealing your name or whatever like this. It's just like the whole music uh, industry is not, uh, we don't have a music industry, to be honest to you. Like, it's just very minimal and uh, very dedicated to some certain, uh, certain uh, uh, music categories. It's not for everyone, unless you have the cash so you can, you know, work it out and there's a lot of behind the curtain stuff, you know, uh, you know, under the table and stuff like this. As not not in a bad way, not in a bad way. I, I mean, I want to correct myself. Uh, as in, like you know, again, it comes to that click stuff that I, we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, is I think there is some stuff different from the U.S. U.S. is much more open market. It's uh, you you can go in and out, and uh, you can actually try your luck. 
there is there is outlets for these things but over here we're kind of like you know very uh limited that's yeah. the only thing I, i i wanted to mention and uh it's just crazy it's just crazy that you know we're facing this on this side of the world and on i mean we 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 eat but we, we even had like a lot of our our friends and uh, uh successful bands that they were they are in the business for more than 20 years uh which one of them we call nerve cell they're extreme death metal <laughs> so uh they're like heavy heavy death metal and like extreme music and they've been in the scene for um roughly around 20 years and they actually toured with a lot of big names they opened for metallica and in abu dhabi the capital of uae and they played a lot of uh, big shows with a lot of uh, metal uh, extreme metal bands abroad and in, uh, in the europe they but they still didn't go to the u.s market which uh, i was talking to one of the one of the members and he was saying that you know uh, the the work behind getting gigs and stuff abroad is just not as easy you guys think it is is so much work is just it's not the glamour of oh yeah this guy gonna sign you up and give you some cash get, gonna give you a cabin you can chill in it until you go for your gig no 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 it's like man you need to get in contact with the labels get contact with the agencies and he was like you know shedding a, a, like he was explaining it to me in a bigger scope i'm like man that's freaking crazy man i mean he's like yeah man if you want to do it you need to do it if you're 150% in the game so you need to dedicate time that's right, why band right. yeah that, that's why bands fall apart you know as you, as you mentioned three guys want to make it and three guys they just want to do it as a music uh, as the love for the music but when it comes down basically your band becomes that business brand that you're trying to to promote so and you treat it and you need to treat it as a business which sadly enough over here and again Uh, I cannot stress this point enough. We don't have outlets to do it. So it's just crazy. Um, Latoya, we can keep talking about this uh, topic and I can blabber and like say a lot of things, but nothing can be done unless we get off our asses and do something about it, which you are doing and kudos to you. You're actually doing a magnis- magnificent job that I, as I told you earlier in the session, I've never seen anyone doing this like you were. dedicating your time to help others to reach to their dreams which is a great thing and thank you very much for doing that thank you so latoya uh i always ask my uh, my guest at the end of the show what is next for latoya cooper or what is next for music meets the boardroom or what is next for music in general oh that's a great question because i am a big thinker and ambitious person which is great. And the next thing, what's next for Music Meets the Boardroom? As soon as the pandemic is over, I'm going to be doing I'm going to be doing a lot of public speaking on big platforms. Um right before the pandemic hit, I was asked to be a guest speaker at a pretty large um one of the top three distribution companies annual conference, so I'm looking forward to that opening up doors. Mm-hmm. I'm in the process of publishing my first book under the Music Meets the Boardroom platform, so that's going to be coming very soon, as well as a series of books that are coming, um, and building my podcast, a Music Meets the Boardroom podcast, where um, we connect ambitious artists with the right tools and resources, where we learn from other artists who have done something well. Whatever you do well, we want to know what you do well and how you did it. and um building the workshops and conferences to be a household name in the music industry. So, lots of things going on and I'm excited about the future. That's great, Latoya. And any final words where they can find you, your your podcasts, where any 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 final words you have to say? Absolutely. If you're interested in learning more about Music Meets the Boardroom, you can go to musicmeetstheboardroom.com and you can subscribe to our newsletter so that you're in the loop on everything that's going on. We're in the process of actually um, putting together a new website, but if you subscribe, it, everything will still transfer over transfer over to that new website. Mm-hmm. You can find our podcast on any podcast platform, um, Spotify podcast, um apple podcast you can even find us on youtube and our first book um will 
pre-sale sometime in September. So we're, we haven't really shared much information on that yet. It's still kind of secretive a little bit, um, but it will be available on all book platforms as well. So, and you can just Google Music Meets the Boardroom and we'll pop right up. That's great. You have, and a... you can follow us on Instagram at Music Meets the Boardroom. Thank yes, you. That's your, important. <laughs> your your handle is already under your video frame. So the, I mean, anyway, I'm gonna be putting. Uh, you you stick around after we're off air. I'm gonna take the links off you, and I'm gonna put them in the caption, so they can find you easily. But Latoya, thank you very much for joining me for this session. It was a blast talking to you and learning. You know tips and tricks about how things can you know that those minimal changes you can make in your strategy and it can actually be fruitful for the future thank you very much again i i, I really enjoyed talking to you and i think it's one of the best episodes i ever had because i'm so happy that I, like i found you just by chance i still don't know how i like came across you 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 followed me or i followed you i don't know but that's great now I know a new person in my life. You are doing great. You're having a lot on your plate. You have a book that's coming out. You're having, you're, you're doing a lot of workshops and you're just being magnificent by yourself and your hair looks beautiful. Yes. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity to just connect with you and collaborate with you. And Thank you to everyone who had questions. Oh my goodness. Keep the questions coming. I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Latoya. And I hope to see you soon. Maybe in person, you come down to Dubai. I'll show you around. We can go to a lot of places. I'll, I'll, I, by the way, I'm, I'm a Dubai kid. I born and brought up here. So we know everything inside out. So it's good to come. If you come down, please contact me. We can go and see a lot, like a lot of, uh, there's, uh, we have a lot of places that they play jazz music, like funk music, and we have, we have, we have stuff, but limitations. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, uh, thank you for that invite, because I definitely will take you up on it. Thank for you so sure. much. Latoya, thank you very much again, and thank you very much, whoever joined for the session. You guys are awesome. And just for a shout out at the end, Gamers Lounge Dubai Facebook, please go over there. They have a giveaway that they're doing. Go and do the drill, test your luck, and may the luckiest guy win. And take care of yourself, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.